I want to welcome you to the Prodigal Son Podcast. You know, I do these podcasts during the Monday through Friday during the week to to strengthen people and help them to to grow in who they are in Jesus Christ. But you know, we do this this video and and this Sunday podcast for for a strengthening time for everyone that that listens because you know, there's a lot of people that don't get out on Sundays. They don't they they're not able to to come and worship at a church. So so we do a special message on it. This comes out on Tuesday uh, mornings and and on Sunday mornings as an audio podcast. So so I want to I want to invite you to go to our website and and find out what we're doing during the week. You know, this is this is something that that we've been doing since 2018. But a year, over a year ago now, we started a study, an in him study, that we have went through an entire list of of uh, scriptures that I've got a card here somewhere. Hang on, I've got a card here somewhere that uh, that we give away. It's a it's a, a postcard. It's got scriptures on uh, on the back and the front. And that those scriptures are in him scriptures that that tell us who we are in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, or who we can be if we're not born again. And and what what I want you to get a hold of and realize today is that you can count on God's word. You can count on what what he has written down for us to to live in and to walk in. I want to read you something that the Lord gave me a couple of days ago, it, and, and it says, It's not hard to believe something that can't fail. And what is that something? It's God's Word. It's not hard to believe something that is the truth that cannot fail. And that's what I want to talk to you this morning about, is, is that God's Word cannot fail. It does not fail. And, and it took me a, a lot of years to find that out, to walk in, in the truths that he has written down for me. You know, I always thought, well, I, I've got I've to do this, this thing as good as I can do it, but it's as strong as I can be to live in it. And I made a mistake. I made a, a bad mistake that cost me over a decade of my life. And, and and cost me a lot of time as in my relationship with God because I was away from him. I was out of his will because that I didn't realize who he had made me to be, who he had made me to be through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And when I come to realize those truths and started getting into those truths many years before I started this podcast when I when I started realizing what God was was really saying about me and about every other person that walked the face of this planet it changed the way I looked at things it changed the way I I walked my daily walk with him so I want to get right into to a, a very special scripture and it's in the 55th chapter of Isaiah and starts with the 8th verse. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may bring seed to the sower and bread to the either, eater. Now listen what this 11th verse is. It says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now, I can remember uh, 30 years ago, close to 30 years. But yeah, I guess, I guess it has been 30 years ago. Reading 
Isaiah 55 and, and preaching a message at a church as a young man in my early 20s. It just, probably my mid-20s by then, but it just, it's unreal what I missed back then. And, and God has given me the, the desire and the commission, the, the marching orders, to, to, to teach others what I missed years ago. You know, I've told this story over and over on this podcast, but, you know, it wasn't just but till a, a, just a few years ago that I realized what God showed me so many, you know, so many dec- decades ago that man was me. I, I've told the story about the the picture that God showed me over uh, almost 30 years ago now. And uh, it was a picture of a, a old dehydrated man, malnourished, looked out, look out like he was on his last leg, standing in the, in the middle of a crystal clear river, dying of thirst. Dying of, of, of thirst when all the water that he would ever need, he was standing in it. And, you know, I, I tell the story at the jail a lot because uh, I, the, we're, these pods that we're in in the jail, they're, you know, probably 30 feet wide maybe, and and they're a large rectangle. And, and I, I, I tell them I just the, the, the river that this man was standing in was you know about as as broad as one of these pods, and he was it was about knee deep in 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 some of the clearest water that you've ever seen, but yet he was dying of thirst, and I didn't get it back then. I thought I thought for a long time that that man was a lost man, that that man was a man that just refused to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior to be born again. And I, I, I had no idea that it, there was anything more than that to it. But not many years ago, I walked out of the garage out here at my house and was walking across the yard. And the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, that man wasn't a lost man. And three decades before, he'd shown me that picture. And three decades before, I thought that man was a lost man. And when when the Lord spoke to my heart and told me that man wasn't a lost man, I knew exactly what he was talking about, that picture that he had shown me so many years before that. You know, over the years, I've, I've thought about and seen that very picture. I can see it in my mind's eye today. Of, of j- j- that old man just just dying of thirst, dehydrated, malnourished to a point of death, refusing just to bend over and 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 take what he needed. You know, I don't know if he was refusing or just didn't know because what I'm about to tell you uh, changed the way I looked at that picture and and what I thought about that picture for so many years before that. The Lord spoke to my heart and he said, look, son, that man's not a lost man. That man was a religious man that refused to believe what I had written down for him to believe. Refused to believe God's word. And not long after that, I come to realize that man was me. That man was me because I had refused to take God's word for what it was and that was the truth you know that 11th verse says that God's word will not return unto him void yet for years I'd never seen anything in God's word come to 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 the realization to fruition in my life but I didn't realize that it was my fault because I didn't believe it. I didn't receive it. I, you know, I think about people that are out here in the world and, and lost. And you think, well, it's simple. All they have to do is receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and believe that. 
and and be born again. But really, if if you really think about it, there's a lot of people in this world that believe God is who he says he is and believe that Jesus died on the cross for their sins and was raised for their justification. But they've never invited him into their heart and life to be their Lord. You know, that's that's what I was I was missing so many years ago. Not that I wasn't born again. Not that 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 God hadn't done a work in my life because I knew he had. But I hadn't I hadn't really taken him at his word for what he had said for it being it being important for me. You see when when I when I talk when I talk to people about uh, who they are in Jesus Christ, you know, the the door to finding out who they are in Jesus Christ is salvation. And a lot of people get born again, and they they never go any further than being born again, than being saved. They never go in get into God's Word and say, now Lord. What do you want me to do? Well, how are you speaking to me? I heard a guy at the jail last week, or maybe his week before last. He uh, he he told he told everybody at the, at the table. He said, "We need to hear from God more. We need to hear from God." And immediately, the Lord brought to my remembrance John one and one. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the word was God. I, I want to go and, and read that scripture. Because I hadn't read it in, in you know a couple of weeks. I like to th- keep things on my mind. And uh, it said, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And, and when I read that to him... I, I, I told him, I said, y'all, look this scripture up. Look it up. Because we want to we get hold of what God is saying here. And that guy was adamant. He wanted to hear more from God. I said, do you want to hear from God? Do you want to hear God speak to you on a daily basis? He said, absolutely. And I said, well, First John, or John 1 and 1 says that the word was God said the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, you can go right on down to the, the 14th verse of John 1, and it says the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. Jesus is the Word. God is the Word. If you want to hear from Him, if you want to hear from God, study His Word. Read His Word out loud so your ears can hear it. Because faith comes by hearing, and and hearing by the word of God. In other words, if you if you want to hear from Him, I promise you, you're hearing from Him when you're reading God's word out loud, so it can build something in you, and that something is faith, faith in God, faith in Him, and then you'll come to the conclusion of what I've come to the conclusion about. It's not hard to believe something that cannot fail. God's word will not fail, cannot fail. That uh, 11th verse of Isaiah 55 said it. He, he said it, my word will not come back to me void. In other words, it'll do what it says it's going to do. I've, I've, I've used uh, Numbers 23, 19 for years and years, get that God's not a man that he should lie. What he said, he will do it. He, I promise you, what God has written down and what he has told us in his word, he will back it up from now on. He said, I am the Lord, I change not. If he's written it down, he will not deviate from what he has written down. You know, I've heard this over and over over the years. You know, I, I I talk about it quite a bit from time to time. But you know, if you want to know God's will, I've heard people you know just get plumb excited about wanting to know God's will. 
but they they have yet to come to the understanding that God's will is God's word. And what he has said in that word, you have to take it and receive it and believe what he has said. And when I come to the, the realization and the knowledge of what God was say, saying to me, for me, and about me in his word, I come to a place that I knew, that I realized that, that what he was saying in his word was for me. I've, 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 I've struggled for decades through my adult life not knowing that I could count on God's word just like everybody else could. There's millions out here that live in that, in those th- in that way. They, they live in a struggle because they, they don't really know where they stand with God. They hope they have uh, done enough, <laughs> and that's the sad part, that, that they, they hope they've done enough for God to be pleased with them. With them when he's been pleased with them for a, for a lot of years because if, if they made Jesus Lord of their life, he don't look at them because of how they are in their flesh, in this carnal, as, as the, the person that they used to be outside of Jesus Christ. But people don't realize that. People do not realize that, that he has placed us in Christ Jesus through salvation. And he looks at us through him, through Jesus Christ and what he done. And when we come to realize that and know that, we can stand up and be the overcomer that, that God wants us to be. Be the overcomer that, that God will do everything in his power to help us to overcome exactly what is designed to destroy us. Jesus said it. He said, look, John 16, 33, he said, In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I have too. And you have too. We've, we've got to come to that realization. We cannot live a Christian life in a, in a mode of religion, in a mode of I've got to do all that I can do to please God. The Bible says it's impossible to please God with what, without what? Without faith has nothing to do with me struggling and straining to, uh, to do all that I can do in me, in my religion, in, in my good, good deeds. Now, don't get me wrong, good deeds are a good thing, but they are not the root of your salvation. They're the fruit of your salvation. Good deeds are the things that you do because Jesus has saved you. And, and there's a desire in your heart to tell others about, the, uh, about what he has done in your life. It doesn't merit you anything as far as salvation is concerned. Our salvation came through faith in Jesus Christ, through the grace that God has given us. When, when Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins, look, we couldn't pay for all the things that we had done. We, there's no way in this world that we could have ever paid for all the, the, the mistakes and the sin that we had committed. I, I, the Lord, I feel like the Lord wants me to go over into, into uh, 1 Peter 1 and 18, if I can get there. 1 Peter 1 and 18. It says, For as much as you know, that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by traditions from your Father, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without spot and without blemish. Listen. You and I weren't redeemed 
because we were good churchgoers, because we went to church every time the doors doors were open. Don't get me wrong, that's a good thing. If you, if you want to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, go find you a good Bible-believing church. And I'm going I'm uh, to say this. If you need help finding a good Bible-believing church, get in contact with me because I will do, do my due, due diligence to find you a good, strong, Bible-teaching, Bible-believing church that you can grow in. But I'm, I'm going to say this. You know, uh, a good church attendance record does not merit you anything as far as your salvation's concerned. Now, you need to go. You need to be fed. You need to be, be strengthened, not with the religion or man's traditions, but be strengthened with this, this precious word that I'm so adamant on teaching you that, that it, it's the answer to every question you'll ever need. It's the answer to all the struggles that you've lived through your life. I, I'm going to tell you something. I struggled the biggest part of my adult life because I didn't believe what God had written down for me to stand in. I didn't think that I could ever measure up and I struggled in that. And it was the farthest thing from the truth because Jesus had made me that new creature. He had recreated me through the new birth and, and given me all that I'd ever need to stand before God strong, stand before God confident. I will never forget a, a man that, that I, I, he's a friend, a good friend. Thank the world of him. But uh, one day I went to church and, and something that stuck in my mind about what he said, it just, I've never been able to uh, have a, a time around him. And I, I pray that the Lord opens the door for me to say something to him because I, I want him to realize what, what he really said that day. And I want to uh, make him understand or not make him but uh, make sure that he understands about what salvation really is but I walked into the church and just had a, I've got an old I used to have I finally threw them away they got so dry rotted and, and ripped up but I had I've had an old pair of camouflage pants that had had the the knee ripped out of them by a chainsaw and and just, you know, they'd been sewn up, just ratty old pants. And I just threw them on and, and come to church. And, and he said, are you going to pre or you gonna preach in that, those? Or he said, what if they ask you to preach? You going to preach in those, in those pants? And he was just giving me a hard time. He's a friend. We cut up and go on. And, and I said, uh, man looks on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. And when he and and he said something that, that has stuck with me all these years, he said, "Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of." And I, I've never forgotten what he said. That's something that we need to be confident in. That that God looks at our heart and knows where we stand. If you'll get what I'm talking about. Jesus died to make us those new creatures, to give us the confidence of not to ever be afraid of where we stand with God. That, that statement he made that day has stuck with me for a lot of years. And I believe that one day the Lord will open the door because I'm not around this man very much, and and when we and when I am around him, there's usually a crowd. You know, we don't go to their house or nothing. We're we're friends, but you know that's just about that's about it. But uh, I pray that the Lord opens the door for me to get hold of something to say to him to help him, because salvation is important. Salvation is very important. And 
what we have to get hold of and realize that what Jesus done on the cross, he really done it to make us strong in him, to justify us in the eyes of a loving God that loves us and cares for us and, and wanted to make a way for us to be right with him. But there's so many people that are born again, but they struggle. Struggle over and over, day after day, week after week, year after year, because they don't know who they are. They don't know who God has made them to be. They don't know what he wants to do in their life today and tomorrow and for the rest of their life. Because they, they find it hard to believe what God has said in his word. And I'm going to say it again. It's not hard to believe something that cannot fail. And that's God's word. It's not hard to believe it. You say, well, you know, I beg to, to differ with you. It, it's hard for me. No, I'm going to say this. You don't know what really bearing down and, and deciding in your heart by faith that God, what God has said is true above anybody's opinion because the devil and religion will do its best to knock you off of that faith in that word. I mean, he will do his due diligence to knock you off of that, that word. The, the Bible talks about it. It says when the, when the word is planted, the, de the devil comes immediately trying to steal it, trying to destroy it so it can't take root in your heart. And that's what this, this whole podcast is all about, is, is teaching people who they are in Jesus Christ so that they can stand strong. They can become what God has made them to be and that is new creatures in him, that they can walk strong in that knowledge, walk strong in all the things that, that God has, has made them to be, not in religion, not in their good deeds, even though those, those are important. I'm, I'm talking about good deeds are important. Morals and ethics are very important in a Christian's life, but they don't save you. They don't. And if we will stand in who we are in Jesus Christ and believe what he has said, there's nothing hard about seeing God's word work in your life. But it takes faith in that word, faith in God, faith in him. And you build faith through listening, through hearing. That's the reason we do all these podcasts, to help you. To help you grow strong in who you are in Jesus Christ. Grow strong in this word. In God's word. Because that's the strength that will last. Now I've got a question for you today. I want to know. I want to ask you. Are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Like I said, there's millions that believe in God. They believe in Jesus Christ and what he done. But they've never took the time to accept him, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Do you want to do that today? Do you want to be born again? Because it's the most important decision that you'll ever make. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. Be born again today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. Confess him as Lord. Invite him into your heart to save you. Because I promise you, it will be the best thing that you have ever done in your entire existence. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Now, I want to encourage you. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. 
It's the-prodigalson.com. Go to our, get all the resources that we have on there. There's a phone app on there that will allow you to download every podcast that's ever been recorded and put out on this podcast, and they're free. It's free. There's no no charge for anything on that website. I the Lord has commissioned me to make sure that people have the resources and that to find out who they are and find out what God has said they are in him and he's given us the resources to do that to give his word away free of charge all over this planet to anybody that'll download it now that that brings me to this next point partners thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry so that we can helping us make sure that that god's word goes out all over this planet free of charge partners you got a part in that i pray mark 10 29 and 30 over you today a hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry now if you're not a partner pray about becoming a partner pray about what god would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today go to our website get in touch with us it's the dash prodigal son.com